Hello grade sixes, welcome to unit three of history with me today. I am so over lockdown and I'm so over COVID-19. It just needs to end now. Let's all pray that this ends very soon and we can go back to having our normal lives soon. It's just been very exhausting just being at home and working from home and not being able to go anywhere. I'm sure you guys are tired as well and you miss your teachers. I miss you all so much much and I'm sure all your other teachers miss, miss you too but let's not waste any time let's get on with our lesson we are doing module 6 unit 3 like I said new ideas and knowledge in the renaissance era um, if you've got your textbook in front of you please turn to page 122 and for our new viewers we are using the St uh, study and master social sciences learners book for grade 6 so when we look at these new ideas and knowledge, we need to um, just uh, look at all four of these ideas that were introduced in the Renaissance period, okay? So all of these are linked and you will see now I'm going to go through each of them and explain them uh, in a more easier way than it has been explained in your book, hopefully, hoping you'll understand it a lot better. So the first one we're going to talk about is secularism, okay? This is moving away from religion. Now we know uh, in our previous um, uh, unit that we did in unit one, because I didn't do unit two with you, but in unit one where we learned about uh, the Renaissance period, we learned that um, people started moving away from religion than uh, how it was in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, people uh, emphasized religion, whereas in the Renaissance, they started moving away. So they wanted rules that would allow people to be free from any religious rules or teaching. So during this time, they moved further and further away from religion. And the way they lived their life, um, they didn't have any religious rules. To, um, to guide them in living the way they wanted to. And how we know um, if you are a religious person or you have a background of some religion, we know that um, spiritual happiness means everything to us. We know one day we are going to pass away and we are going to go to heaven. However, during this time, attaining that or, or trying to get that spiritual happiness meant less and less to them and what was more was the worldly pleasures and material things like money and uh, and fame and status that meant more to them than attaining worldly uh, than attaining spiritual happiness or, or obeying god for that matter because there was no religious uh, religion and music and art was also had also started being expressed in a way that was far away from religion and more in an individual way um, that was, you know, forms form uh, part of secularism. The next thing I want to talk about is humanism, and this is because there's a direct link from secularism into humanism, okay? So this... Um, this topic is when uh, human beings started to move away from uh, believing that God was at the center of their world and everything they had to do was believe in God and please God. And now they had turned to make uh, to being uh, to making ordinary people, human beings, the center of attention. Okay, they believed that human beings had all the beauty and the dignity and worth in the world rather than pleasing God or you know, learning about the religion and the beauty of religion and, and the beauty of dignity within religion. So it, they moved away and this also promoted um, the people to study more uh, of literature, more of art, and they learned a lot about civilization from the ancient Greeks and Romans. Then coming from uh, humanism, we move to individualism, uh, excuse me, individualism, okay? So this takes humanism a few, a few steps further and it goes more in depth. So individualism doesn't now focus on all human beings as one, but more so on the, video, uh, on the individual themselves. So each person it was allowed to then start expressing, or encouraged rather, to start expressing their own personalities and feelings in ways that they wanted to. Okay, and by doing this, these individuals were allowed to use their own unique talents 
and become great uh, and become capable of great achievements by educating themselves with literature with art with civilization that they learned from the greeks and humans uh, romans uh, polities uh, greeks and romans um, science and technology became important so they needed to then move away from religion and find out that there was more things that they could educate themselves on and achieve high up and the last one we're going to learn about is skepticism. So people became very curious about the world because you must remember for many centuries, they had only been taught about Christianity, uh, only about, uh, you know, religion and everything they had that had to be done had to be just for religion. And they were encouraged to then question those in charge because they were so curious of what else was out there. Anyone who was a leader or anyone who was in charge, they were put there as a religious leaders and these ordinary people started questioning this. And their faith had then started becoming replaced with their doubt and questioning as to why do things happen like this? Should we believe in, in, in this religion that you talk about? Is there such a thing as God? So people started moving away and questioning their leaders. And this is what we call skepticism. Now we're going to move on to page 123, okay? And we need to link up where where did mathematics come from? Astronomy, physics, medicine, and engineering. Now during this time, Europeans were not educated about any of this. They they were just learning about music and art. They weren't exposed to things like mathematics and astronomy and physics. So for those of you who don't know, astronomy is your is your study of your planets and your and your space. And physics would be uh, your all your science. When you get to grade ten, you will be, get a choice to choose physics as a subject. Okay, and we learn from this that there was a golden age of Arab science and culture because during that time and for many centuries after and before this, the Arab Muslim scholars, so Muslim meaning those um, Arab people who followed the religion of Islam, they are called Muslim, okay? So these Arab people who followed the religion of Islam were for centuries the world's greatest scientists, okay? They also developed mathematics and astronomy and physics and medicine and engineering, like I have said, okay? So all the knowledge and ideas from the Middle East, which is where all these Arab countries are, they were swapped with uh, the, ancient, uh, the, the Asian cultures of India and China. So we know that in term one, we learned about the Silk Road, which was the, the road between Europe and Asia. So with this, we know that if, if all this information from the Middle East, from these Muslim people, from, from these Arab Muslim scholars who were so well, um, so well learned in, uh, in these things like mathematics and astronomy, all the information that got swapped in India and China with their medicines and cultures, all of that had then uh, been spread and passed on to the people in Europe. So they had developed a lot later. Okay, coming back to it, um, we uh, some of the first mathematicians were Arab, uh, the Muslim Arab, the astronomers were Muslim Arab, the, the physics and the medicine, the scientists and medicine and engineering had all started in these Middle Eastern countries by Arab scholars. And it had then developed when they had started sharing ideas and knowledge with the Indians and the Chinese. Remember, we learned about Chinese medicine. All of this is linked together, which then later on had gotten passed over and, and spread into Europe. So I just wanted to show you some of the some of the achievements that these Middle Eastern and Asian scholars had achieved. Okay, so we use uh, we use um, numerals today in in our numbers. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, 
in Arabic, these were first developed as Arab numbers, Arabic numbers, the language Arabic. So if you look at the picture at the top, um, in the top left hand corner, you will see it's got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 in green. And in, in Arabic, uh, in red, you've got your Arabic uh, numbers. And that is where we developed our numeric system, um, like you see in green. We learned it and we adapted it first from the uh, the the arabs okay uh, we also the uh, the arabs the muslim arab scholars had also invented the decimal system and the theory of evolution they had also learned about um, and discovered gravity and the relationship between weight speed and distance and just going back to the theory of evolution this comes from scientists, not uh, necessarily Arab. However, um, this was an idea that was also swapped from Asians and from um, from the Indians into the Arab. Because not not a lot of Muslim people actually believe in the theory of evolution. Okay, um, for many religious reasons. Um, and then, if you look to the right hand side, like I said, on top they measured the speed of light, and underneath that they worked out the circumference of the Earth, meaning the distance around the earth the measurement of it now if you look at that picture that's just underneath that that is all written in Arabic they were able to create a device that was uh, that that helped us with um, with measuring uh, the distance around the globe the entire circumference of the earth and this was done by Muslim Arab scholars okay and I just thought that would be nice to show you guys with the pictures and the and some of the instruments that they use and hopefully in the next few units we will be discussing more of this which is it gets even more interesting and more exciting so thank you guys uh for watching i hope this helps um for my grade sixes at my school you guys know that you have a project that is due very soon um so please work hard on it i hope these um presentations are helping you and I I'm going to even help you more with your project if you look on the side there I've got one of our first um, mathematicians he was also a Muslim Arab scholar and he was the inventor of algebra and for all our new uh, learners and our new viewers we are using the study and master social sciences learners book grade 6 and this unit is on page 122 and 123 thank you guys and stay well and stay safe.